now we're Bismillah wa wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, we are continuing with our discussions, picking up whatever gems we can that I think are easy to explain for everybody, even you guys that don't have any background in Arabic um, or have minimum background in Arabic, uh, to try to appreciate some of the subtleties in the Quran. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about something that is Maybe a little bit more complex, but I think we can simplify it. So let's, you know, uh, start by talking to you about the concept itself. So English is a kind of language in which we don't have um, diacritical marks or we don't have, um, you know, declinations. Now, th those are big words. So let me tell you what that means simply. The word book, it doesn't matter how you use it in a sentence, is still going to sound like the word book. Mm -hmm. The word car is still going to sound like the word car. Right, so it doesn't matter what it's doing in the sentence. The car sounds like the car, but in Arabic, uh, a word changes the way it sounds at the end depending on how you're using it in a sentence. So the Arabic word for book is kitab, uh, and in some cases you'll you, you'll hear kitabun, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in other cases you'll hear kitaban with an an at the end, or in other places you, you'll hear kitabin at the end. So mm -hmm. even though the word is kitab with a b, the, the last letter is a ba. Uh, but we add certain endings to it depending on what role it's playing in a sentence, yeah. right? So that's very telling because we don't look at the entire sentence to figure out what's going on with this word. The word itself is giving us quite a bit of information because of its declined endings. Those endings at the end, those ending sounds that I just told you, un, an, and in, or u, an, e, among others. These are the sounds that give away a lot of what's going on inside of a sentence in the Arabic language. This is not a lesson on grammar. But what I wanted to show you is first and foremost, just those things have a significance, right? So uh, now let's turn to the screen and I'll show you a couple of words. Um, and those of you that are my students of Arabic, this should be fairly easy to understand. But those of you who are not students of Arabic, this shouldn't be too hard to understand either. Um, so the word is salam, which means peace. So I'll write it in English too, for those of you who can't read in Arabic. Salam, right? Uh, but one, one time I wrote it as Salamun. So I added an un at the end. Um, and this other time I'm writing Salaman. I'm adding an an at the end. Okay, so Arabic students know that this one is Rafa ah and this one is Nasl. Yeah. Um, now, this, the word itself is peace. That's all it means, peace. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's as if the word peace had un once and un another time, yeah. but it's still peace, mm -hmm. right? However, it does make a difference, if especially if you see the word in isolation just by itself, mm -hmm. just by itself. So what this, if you see salamun, if you see the un at the end, mm -hmm. then and this is something I haven't really taught you guys in detail yet, but I've taught you enough of the pieces of this for you to get it. If you see salamun and the un at the end, because it's a rafr status, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually, even if it's by itself, it's a a, 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 a ji, a jumla ismiya. Mm -hmm. But why? Because rafr beginning, jumla ismiya, mm -hmm. right? If you see salaman, which is nasb status, mm -hmm. that's what we call this in Arabic, right? That means it's some kind of a maf'ul. Yeah. Because there's no harf nasab or nothing else making it nasab, mm -hmm. this is a jumla fi'liya. Mm -hmm. And now let's put this in English. This is a noun based statement, mm -hmm. and this is a verb based statement. And we're still in that chapter, we're discussing nouns versus verbs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we've said a few things about nouns before. Nouns are timeless, right? Mm -hmm. Don't have a doer. If you say apple, you don't say who did it. No, it's just an apple. Yeah. There's no doer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and there is timeless. No, actually, timeless and don't have a doer is good enough. And there's a constant also. With well, a constant inside timeless, so that's that's okay. Okay. Then salaman verb based. What what does a verb based thing have? Well, it's limited in time. Right has a doer, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So here's the, the deal. You have this ayah. Hal ataka hadithu al-Mukramin? 
did the news of the guests of Ibrahim, the noble ones, the noble guests of Ibrahim, did the news of them come to you? If when the khalu alayhi, when they entered upon him, meaning when they came to his home, faqalu, then they said, salaman. They said what? Salaman. salaman. So they used the nasab. When, the, when you see the nasab on its own like that, which one is it? Is it a jumla fi'liya or a jumla ismiya? Which one is it? It's a jumla fi'liya. Good, Bul Maryam. Qala, he responded, meaning Ibrahim said, Sala mun. Jumla ismiya. Now, an English translation of Surah 51, Ayahs 24 and 25, will say something like, They entered upon his home. They said peace. Mm-hmm. He said peace. Yeah. This is peace. Salaman. This is peace. Salamun. Yeah. Except, and qawmun munkarun, a people I don't know. Mm-hmm. A people unknown to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, meaning, he's saying, I've never seen you guys before, but still peace. Mm-hmm. However, in the Arabic, you can clearly tell that there's a difference between the way they said salam mm-hmm. and the way said. he said salam. Mm-hmm. Right? This is kind of like, assalamu alaikum, and this is kind of like, wa alaikum salam. Right? Except it's a single word. Salaman, nasab. Mm-hmm. Salamun, rafa. Mm-hmm. So which one did they give him? The nasab one. Yeah. The nasab one is a jumla fi'liya. So it's actually like this. It's not just peace, but peace is actually a detail. It's nasab, right? It's a detail. Yeah. So it's like saying, we offer you peace. Mm-hmm. We wish you peace. Mm-hmm. We come in peace. Okay, mm-hmm. um, well, we pray for you for peace. Mm-hmm. Peace is a detail of all these. We, 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 because they came in yeah. and they said, we come in peace. We wish you peace. Mm-hmm. You know, so when they say the word peace, they themselves are doing some. They're, they're referring to an act. They didn't say it. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Right. But when he said peace, there's no action behind it. There's no fi'il behind it. Because it's not the fi'il version, it's the ism version. So jumla ismiya. Yeah. Right? It doesn't have a doer. There's no we offer you or we or I offer you peace back. He's saying peace, may peace be on you, on me. Um, for and forever. Why am I saying that? Because first of all, as an, an ism doesn't have a doer. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have a doer. Mm-hmm. So he's not even talking about I'm giving you peace back. He's saying I hope there's peace. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't mention a detail. So there's no limit on who the details are. So he's not just saying peace to them. He's also saying peace to. Himself, I hope I stay at peace because you guys are here. Meaning, I hope you guys don't kill me. Yeah. I don't know who you are. And I pray for, I'm asking Allah for peace. And where will this peace come from? It may be the peace from coming from Allah, from the angels, from each other. Yeah. There's no limit to what this can mean because it's a noun. It's not limited by a verb. Yeah. So th- his salam is kind of unlimited. Their salam is actually what? Limited. Limited by just them offering peace because it's part of a jumla fi'liya. Mm-hmm. It's restricted by a fi'l. And a fi'l is stuck in time. Mm-hmm. So their peace is current. Mm-hmm. His peace is forever. forever. And may, may I, I pray it was always there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I pray it will always be there. And I pray it's there during our interaction. Mm-hmm. In other words, he responded with a peace that is better than theirs. You know that that uh, ayah of the Quran, wa ida, or maybe you don't know the Arabic, wa ida huyyitum bi tahiyyatin fa hayyu bi ahsana minha aw rudduha. In Allah, kana ala kulli shayin hasiban surah al nisa. Allah says, if you were greeted with a greeting, then respond with something better, or at least return the same, which is what we do in Islam. Somebody says, Assalamu alaikum, we say, Wa alaikum assalam, at least. Mm-hmm. Or we say, Wa alaikum assalam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In other words, we respond with something better. Even just by making this rafa, Allah is telling us that Ibrahim alayhi salam, thousands of years before coming of the Quran, was already living that when somebody would offer him peace, he was responding with something better. better. Just in that rafa. 
And that beautiful lesson about the manners of Ibrahim alayhi salam and actually the, the situation at hand because he's, off, he's asking for divine peace to come in this strange situation. All of that is missed because we don't know that this ending is different from this ending. Right? Yeah. It's such a powerful lesson that just got lost. Yeah. Now, look at this one. Rasulullah was told in Surah Al Muzammil, Fasbir, Fasbir, Sabran, Jamilan. Fasbir, Sabran, Jamilan. We call this a Maf'ul Mutlaq. You see the Anatian, mm -hmm. Sabran, Jamilan. Be patient in the most beautiful way. But this is a this is an amr. There's an act, there's a fi'l here, and this is the detail. And details are what status? Nasab. Nasab yeah? yeah. So be patient in what way? In the most beautiful way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is the the Prophet was told these words, Sabran Jamilan, and they are Nasab. You can see that, yeah? Mm -hmm. They are the unending. All right, so now let's pay attention to Surah Yusuf. They brought his shirt with false blood. You know that part of the story? When they brought Yusuf Ali's shirt with fake blood on it? No. To his dad? Mm -mm. Like they took him out to the woods, they oh. threw him in a well, they and took his shirt, yeah. they put an animal's blood on it, and they mm -hmm. came back to make up a story to their dad, a wolf ate him. Mm -hmm. So they took, convinced their dad they brought a shirt with oh. fake blood on it. Like a blood of an animal, a blood that's a, a, a blood that was a lie. It wasn't his blood. Um, he said, amra." No, the truth is something you've done, some decision you've made. You made your you made it convenient for yourselves. Meaning, you made you made it okay for yourselves to commit such a vile act, and you're lying to me, right? So he called them out on their nonsense. Then he said, "This is the father." Who knows that his sons are lying about killing their brother, yeah. uh, or or their their brother being killed about by by a wolf? There was no wolf. Fasabrun, Jamil. You see the similar words. Yeah. But what status are they? Arafa. Yeah. Allah told the Prophet Sallallahu when the people of Mecca insult you, sabran Jamilan, mm. nasab. Yeah. Why? Because a, a fi'l is temporary. This is Allah's way of telling the Prophet ﷺ that the torture you're going through in Mecca is not permanent. Mm. Just for now, hold out. Yeah. Just hold out in a beautiful way. Yaqub ﷺ, when he heard that they've done this, he realizes this problem is not getting solved anytime soon. Mm. I better be ready for a timeless, long mm. sabr. Mm. So what does he say? He says, sabrun Jamil. jamilun. And he didn't even make himself the doer as if I'm not sure if I can do it, but I know that's what's needed right now, mm -hmm. right? So his words are so beautiful because they actually encapsulate his plea to Allah that I, he didn't say I shall be patient in a beautiful way. He didn't make himself the doer. If he made himself the doer, this would have been sabran jamilan and the taqdeer would have been fa'asbiru sabran jamilan. He didn't make himself the doer because he's recognizing his weakness in that moment. And he's turning to Allah and saying, Sabrun Jamilun is what is needed. Mm -hmm. Sabrun Jamilun from somewhere, Ya Rab. May Sabrun Jamilun come on me and come on this child, whatever situation he's in. Like he used the ism version mm -hmm. to not limit the doer, to not limit the time, to actually express his inability at the moment that it has to be divine intervention that, that, that'll make him capable of Sabr in this moment. And he did all of that just by using and and by the way also that because the ismiya is long term and timeless mm -hmm. he he is asking allah not just for sabr in this moment but he can also foresee that maybe allah will t t you know uh, test him with this sabr and his sons will put him in this difficulty for years and years and years so he needs a kind of sabr like a fuel tank that won't run out It'll have to be constant. And so he uses the ism form. It's so powerful. And we would, so it's the same phrase as the Prophet Sallallahu but this one is nasab and this one is rafa and it changes everything. It just changes everything. And it, look at what it does for the Prophet Sallallahu What it does for the Prophet Sallallahu is it tells him that it's going to come to an end. Mm -hmm. Right? Because Allah could have said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ Right? You don't have to say فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ You can say what? Just like Yaqub Alaihi Fa sabrun jamilun, right? 
And it, it has, had those been the words, it's like the Prophet Sallallahu would have been told, this needs to be an endless thing. This is your career. Most of your life will be spent in some, but if not all of it, you have to tolerate what they're doing to you. But he didn't have to do that. They were overcome, right? So, uh, and actually the temporary nature of it is so beautiful in Surah Al-Muzammil. فَاصْبِرْ صَبْرًا جَمِيلًا إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا So beautiful. Because, you know, uh, show this beautiful patience, demonstrate this beautiful patience, they see it as far away, we see it as near. Even the text is alluding to how temporary this whole situation is going to be by referring to the Akhirah itself. Like just like the Akhirah, they think it's far away and it's near, well, the victory is also not that far away. And the relief that's coming to you is not that far away. So I hope you guys appreciated this small little nugget of beauty in the way Allah describes His Sabr. And also, one thing I didn't say, it also shows you the special love Allah has for His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So even when He puts His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a difficult situation, mm -hmm. He still includes in it that relief is on the way. Right, so even when the Prophet is being tested, there is a relief that is embedded inside of the meanings, and that's why everybody should learn a little bit of Arabic. It's not that hard, is it? Is it, children? No, not really. It's like Maryam's like piece of cake. This is not even pff, doesn't even take sabr jamil, <laughs> you know, to to learn Arabic. So everybody can. Everybody can. It doesn't matter if you know nothing. If you know a lot, any one of you can learn Arabic. So I'd, I'd encourage you to sign up uh, and start. Some of you ask, oh, when can we? Where can we sign up? And you know the the recordings are already there, and you'll enjoy the recordings. I promise you. If you're if you're committed, you can get a lot done. You don't even have to sign up on Bayina.tv yet. You can start on YouTube. Just YouTube search Dream Intensive One Day One, mm -hmm. and get started from there. And once you finish the four intensives, then you can sign up on Bayina TV. Uh, and I'm I'm reminding you again. In the month of Ramadan, we have thousands of students around the world that are learning with us. That um, are benefiting from this program. Many of them can't afford the $112 a year that we ask for uh, as a tuition for this education and the other library. Um, and so if you'd like to sponsor any one of them, um, I'd encourage you to do so by visiting bayina.tv. Um, if you can't do that, all we ask for is your du'as because they're all learning Quran from all over the world and we'd love to you know, support them. Even if uh, my policy in Bayina is even if we can't find any sponsors for them, we're still going to sponsor them. We'll find some way, but if you'd like to take part in their reward and you know uh, get get their duas, because I get some beautiful emails. I've been getting them every day now. Like some students will write to me and say, "I was waiting to to have somebody sponsor me. I just found out I got sponsored." And then like a long list of heartfelt duas for the person that sponsored them, even though they don't know each other and they don't have each other's contact information, right? Mm -hmm. Which is so cool because the person, the the one who has both contact informations, are the angels that are writing it down. Yeah. So there's going to be this other like. You know how your phone has a contact list? Yeah. On Judgment Day, there's going to be a different contact list. Like, hey, so your rewards contact list, there's this person. Your, oh, you're my spot. Oh, wow. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I studied a lot. Thank you for studying a lot. It helped me a lot, kept giving me rewards. Yeah. So they're going to be giving each other hugs on Judgment Day. Mm -hmm. Right? So, may Allah Azza wa Jal give all of you reward for your own learning and for helping somebody else learn. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum guys. Have a good day inshallah. And remember, do your best and Allah will do the rest. Ain't that the truth? Mm-hmm.